So in the very recent past, we wouldn't necessarily have tested a patient for the presence or absence of defective mismatch repair. Um, in recent years, we have discovered that MSI status or mismatch repair status as conferred by especially high-frequency microsatellite instability has become a very important biomarker for a, a small subgroup of patients who are now very important because other therapies are available to them. So certainly a patient such as this at the very beginning of their illness uh, should have their MSI status determined. Such a patient obviously has multiple options open to him uh, for first-line therapy. Um, one of the first ways that we sort patients when they walk into the office uh, with such a situation is to uh, determine whether or not they will ever become a candidate for curative intent uh, therapies such as surgery. Um, such a patient with widespread disease is exceedingly unlikely ever to go on to undergo interventions such as surgery with curative intent. So we know that in, in such patients our goals of therapy are different. They are to improve overall survival and progression-free survival and to maintain their quality of life for as long as possible through the course of their illness. In such a patient, we would always consider the question of surgery. Um, in particular, the question of whether or not the primary tumor should undergo resection or not is an important question for the 25% of patients who show up with stage 4 disease de novo. Um, this question um, was and has been a relatively complicated question um, having to do with things like uh, the patient's performance status, their risks of surgery, the burden of their disease, uh, the location and complexity of their primary tumor resection, whether the tumor is obstructing or not or nearly obstructing or whether there are other um, incidental complications such as bleeding. Now in such a patient, um, some recent studies have suggested that patients uh, through the course of their illness will never actually need to undergo such a surgery for their primary tumor. And in this patient who's basically asymptomatic from the point of view is of his primary tumor, I would not recommend that he go to surgery. As for other surgical techniques such as metastatectomy, those surgeries which are aimed at resecting metastatic disease, he obviously has too widespread disease to undergo resection. So in terms of the patient's choices for first-line therapy, um, most patients that we see with this disease are going to be candidates for combination chemotherapy in combination also with antibodies. Um, some patients with, say, more medical comorbidity or with a worse performance status might do better with a single chemotherapy drug, in particular a fluoropyrimidine such as 5-FU or capecitabine. Uh, and then the antibody question is really a separate question. But this, certainly this patient with a good performance status would be a, uh, a candidate for combination chemotherapy. And uh, multiple studies and experience over multiple years has suggested that the first line of chemotherapy backbone is not in general a very important question and that they are in general equivalent. So either arenatecan or oxaliplatin in combination with a fluoropyrimidine would be a good choice for this patient. So the question of sidedness with respect to colorectal cancer has recently gained a lot of attention because of several well-publicized retrospective analyses of large clinical trials. Um, the origins of this question actually go back uh, at least 30 years when uh, we recognized or began to see signals in mostly in epidemiological studies that patients who had left-sided primary tumors uh, behaved differently from patients with right-sided primary tumors. And one uh, cogent hypothesis for this is that the embryological origin of those two sides of the colon are different, and therefore the uh, biological makeup of those tumors will be different as well. And we've begun uh, recently to understand the exact genetic and genomic basis of those differences. So uh, although we have some very, uh, I think, exciting and important data to, to begin to consider from recent clinical trials about the differential outcomes of patients who have left versus right-sided tumors, the, the full answers to all of the questions are not in yet. Um, however, it is one of those factors that I believe we should begin to consider uh, when deciding how to sequence a patient in their therapy through the course of their illness. So for this patient, be, especially because of the presence of the KRAS mutation, uh, I believe that treating him uh, the same way is appropriate whether or not he has a left or a right-sided tumor. Um, the, 
it, the, the more complicated question arises when a patient has a left-sided wild-type KRAS tumor because recent studies um, that have been done by the CLGB and by European groups have suggested that those patients might do significantly better uh, with EGFR-directed therapy earlier in the course of their treatment rather than later. But for this patient, it makes sense to go forward with combination chemotherapy along with bevacizumab, whether he has a right or a left-sided primary tumor.